Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The dog was helping. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the March 15th meeting of the Loring County Board of Commissioners. Our word for the day is Proverbs 11, 12, 13. That's easy to remember, right? It is foolish to belittle, it is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. And Commissioner Kalo dog today or is nope. it Max? It's the warden. Oh, the warden, dog warden. Good morning. Today we have a, a beagle corgi mix. Um, she's probably about three to four years old, found in Elyria. Available uh, tomorrow, the 16th. Um, we have 31 other dogs over there, so come on over and take a Hello. look. Thanks. How do we do at the uh, rally to the rescue? Do we get any dogs adopted on Saturday? Yes, good. Investments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Okay. Appropriations? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Uh, there are no advances or repayments today. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Travel? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Bills? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Uh, number eight, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on summary sheet for employees within jurisdiction of Lorain County Board of Commissioners. Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I do <coughs> have a few issues I'd like to discuss with the board in executive session. I, I, do, I do not have any potential hires I want to discuss today, but I do want to update you on uh, some labor negotiations with United Oil Workers, United Steel Workers, um, sale of real estate and a pending legal matter. All three of those subjects are allowable under the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion, so I'd ask at the conclusion of our meeting today, we go into executive session to discuss those items I've explained. Thank you. Okay. Number nine, approve and waive the reading of the same for the Lorain County Board of Commissioners meeting minutes of March 8, 2017. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Number 10, support amendments to the Ohio Revised Code and Ohio Administrative Code to prevent Lake Erie harmful algal blooms. Um, before we get uh, vote on this, I'd like to ask Mac Schaefer to come up. He is the one that uh, brought this to our attention uh, for our consideration. So Max, did you want to give us a little overview on this? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the resolution itself outlines the history of this issue. 
um, where we currently stand on it and what the Ohio Environmental Code is suggesting we do to uh, fix the solution. Um, we realize how much of an asset Lake Erie is, uh, how vital it is to drinking water for millions of individuals throughout Ohio. Uh, and we have a serious issue that we've been plagued with, with harmful algal blooms. Um, we know the pollution is preventable from reaching Lake Erie and the amounts that cause this harmful algal blooms. Uh, it is phosphorus and nitrogen that leach into Lake Erie, uh, primary f primarily from large-scale agriculture. Um, that is the main factor in this. Um, cities, counties, uh, local governments have already been regulated by the state and federal agencies to uh, put specific limits on the amount of allowed flow into our region's waterways, uh, yet there is no action on agriculture. Um, so the four things that this resolution is calling for is requiring plans that prevent pollution, uh, stop over fertilizing of crops. There are specific limits that crops can absorb uh, and farmers sometimes want to uh, save cost, save time, and so they over apply and put two years worth of fertilizer on their crops, three years worth. Um, so we have testing apparatuses that, that work um, to say this is the amount that's already in our system, uh, this is the amount that would work to properly absorb for a full crop yield. Um, the third is requiring plans to prevent pollution, um, calling for Ohio to enact new law requiring agricultural producers to develop and follow plans uh, that detail the best management practices for their specific farms. Sorry, that's the first one. <laughs> Just an overview of the first one. Uh, the third one, sorry, is uh, improved compliance and enforcement. Uh, so that means dedicating um, adequate human and financial resources to uh, seeing if uh, farms are over applying. And we're not talking about little mom and pop farms here. We're not talking about uh, Fenix or anything like that. We're talking about huge industry here. Um, the last one is setting nutrient pollution limits. Uh, Clean Water Act directs each state to establish water quality standards. <clears throat> in Ohio, uh, it is very vague in what we uh, set as our criteria. It just says um, that our direct surface waters be, quote, free from nutrients entering the waters as a result um, of human activity and concentrations that create nuisance growths of aquatic weeds and algae. Uh, we set specific limits. We've set specific limits and what we want to do to reduce these harmful algal blooms. We are tasked with reducing um, phosphorus by 40% over the next few years uh, into Lake Erie. And so we have those specific numbers, but we don't have the numbers set to say, okay, this is the amount of phosphorus and nitrogen that is in our waterways. In our waterways. So uh, our thought is if we have a number to reduce to, we need numeric sets of numbers to get to that point. Um, so we have specifics here on what exact sections of the ORC and the OAC that need to be amended. Uh, those discussions will happen if the state complies with all this, um, with ODNR, with Ohio Ag, with OEPA, uh, organizations like ours, and with business. You know, th th those specifics will be hashed out at a later point. We're just calling for it to happen, so. Well, I, don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is there any indication that fracking causes any of this to happen? Uh, I, mean, I mean, fracking definitely has an effect on um, groundwater. Uh, it is probably a different issue. Okay. Um, the blue-green algae uh, is actually, it's not actually, and, and sci the science side of it is not my <laughs> strong point, but it's actually not a algae. It's a toxin. It's a bacteria. It's a cyanotoxin. Um, and so that is the main issue when it comes to the harmful algal bloom. So uh, fracking is in itself an issue, and we do see uh, leaching of those chemicals into drinking water, but that is sort of a separate different issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And like I said, on, the your, on your question on the fracking, mm -hmm. it's been uh, and there is data out there that uh, the small quakes that occur sometimes mm -hmm. because of fracking uh, actually make uh, dry streams wet again. Uh, certain ditches that have not seen water over a long period of time now may be seeing water, so you may have new new paths of, of flow into rivers and streams uh, that carry nutrients that have been re remaining dormant in, in those areas. Uh, so in addition to you know, possible groundwater contamination, that's basically with the chemicals that they're releasing. Uh, but it does change uh, some of the surface conditions that could change the direction of runoff uh, into uh, rivers, lakes, and streams. 
No, thank you. Is that Appreciate it? it Matt. Do you have yeah. More? Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very yes. important issue. Um, yeah, I think it's just important to point out that it's a you know it's a shared responsibility. Uh, sometimes when people see legislation like this, they think that folks are picking on the farmers, and that's not not the case here. It's a shared responsibility, and um, but we all have to realize our our role in, in what we play. I know when I was driving over this morning, I stopped for breakfast. I was pulling out of the parking lot, and I noticed all the salt that was covering the parking lot, and I thought, you know, that still ends up headed mm -hmm. towards Lake Erie as yeah. well too, mm -hmm. and uh, those are the small things that we just don't we don't think about. But it's a it's a shared responsibility. We certainly don't ever want to find ourselves in a position of what uh, uh, Lucas County and the Toledo area went through uh, not so long ago, and and uh, I'm sure folks there thought it could never happen to them, but it certainly did, and we certainly don't want to have it happen here. And it's a it's a great resource that we have. Uh, obviously, we're still very concerned about. Uh, Washington and the current president and his wishes to, to cut back on Great Lakes restoration funding from about 300 million to about 10 million dollars. Um, it's just really important that we be very careful about uh, protecting our lake and it's, it's a great resource but uh, boy it can be harmed quickly if we don't uh, take proper steps. That was one of our discussion points. Well, Congresswoman Capra was at her town hall the other evening in Lorraine and that was one of the discussions, cutting $300 million down to $10 million, how we're going to maintain the, you know, clean water. Extremely important drinking water. It was my meeting with Max the other day and someone from his office. I mean, you just got to talk about drinking water. Everything else sort of m mixes up the message that it's got to be talking about just safe drinking mm -hmm. water. I don't right. think anybody can say no to that. Right. So right. maybe we can get past some of the partisan issues in regards to this. Thanks for bringing it to our <coughs> attention. So, so moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Number 11, approve the 2017 Permanent General Fund Annual Appropriation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about what happened here. Okay. Uh, as we all know, the sales tax goes into effect April 1st, a quarter percent increase. Uh, we'll start collections sometime, first collection last week of June, third week, depending on when they want to post the sales tax receipts. Uh, the Budget Commission's come back and has given us a $5.2 million increase, which is about net what we needed to break even. We have done some appropriations that we said we would do in regards to the dollars. Uh, new vehicles for the Sheriff's Department. Uh, we're looking at repairs that we don't have the numbers back on yet. They're still out looking for the numbers, correct? Mr. We're, we're doing the uh, we already assessment. we are already in the process of doing some of the capital improvements at the jail that were necessary. Okay. Uh, we picked the big ones, There's some rooftop units, definitely shower work. Uh, the, the showers. Let me let me explain that because we're going oh, showers, right? No, no. The showers from water seepage, um, the walls were deteriorating to a point where you could push them over. Mm -hmm. uh, so we needed a lot of work in those areas. They were very old and, 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 and depleted. So we're doing that. We're doing some roof work, some HVAC unit work. The locks, um, maybe? The locks. Uh, I will tell you that uh, um, I haven't finished up my conversations with Mr. Hammond, but <clears throat> the new telephone contract for the inmates to make phone calls. Mm -hmm. uh, they're working with the vendor to bring us, uh, we may not have to pay for the video surveillance system as part of that contract. We may get this company to install the video visitation system mm -hmm. and the, some of that video that, that's been a problem for us. So we'll, if we don't do it through that contract, we're obviously we're going to have to do it through capital improvement. It's, a, it's old, they can't get parts for it anymore, and the locks are definitely, they, they, they've had it. So those are some big things that we didn't, I'm sure you're going to speak to the fact that we coroner the prosecutor coroner the prosecutor we I met with the coroner met with his folks got to meet with them again but we did funnel some immediate need money over to them uh, to push their, them in the right direction and of course additional prosecutors uh, additional prosecutor support staff he was down uh, five bodies total and with all the new courts that are going on having a hard time covering all of those courts even when we get the was it a million eight that went for the new recovery court judge Moraldi said Addis will be alcohol drug abuse Services will be administering. There was nothing there for support staff, prosecutors, and or well, is it the state secretary of money to, to every, every special court, the state gives some grant money to put on, which eventually that grant money just somewhat gets depleted and runs out, requires us to staff 
that court. You can, it's not any good when you don't have anybody working in that court. Right. And I don't mean from the court's perspective. I mean from the prosecutor, the assist staff that, that's needed to work in that. Right, that has to do all the work. So uh, we've moved forward on that. There's no additional money, so we're just about breaking even after those expenditures. And then the capital stuff, you know, we'll look at how that's going to go through the notes or bonding eventually. My understanding, and, and I started going through the budget, I was out yesterday, and, but I started going through it last week. We have not made additional appropriations in, except in those specified areas over the 2016. Correct. Everything uh, else is I think that's part. necessary to tell folks that, but there are some obligations that are going to come due later in the year that we're going to have to deal with. Right now, we've just told everybody, let the dust settle. Right. But uh, we knew that the, we didn't have enough revenue for the, six, for the 17 budget, which was a mirror of the 16 budget. There's some obligations and contracts. That, that have to be met, and I think this summer we'll have to relook at some of those things. But right now, you guys have said keep the lid on. No, we're, we have to because there's no more money in the budget. Commission only gives us such a certificate number that we can't do anything else until that point. But uh, yeah, I think I'm it, comfortable with the budget. Give me one second. No, 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 okay. I'm comfortable with the budget with the budget director and with the administrator and working with the elected officials who had the immediate needs. We told the public we were going to do with the money. Again, it falls, you know, 70 plus percent of our budget goes into safety forces and the coroner is being overrun with opioids. There's actually a county I got on a tweet today from the CCAO and I don't remember which county it is, but they have to rent freezers. It was in the paper today. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't get to that I think yet. it was Sandusky. No, it wasn't in the county. No, somewhere I can look back no. through it. Cheryl Subler <laughs> sent it out, but they actually have to rent additional freezer sp space because of all the bodies. That's Montgomery. Is, at the is it Montgomery? Okay. From the, the herring from the herring up. From the herring up. There's more than one yeah. uh, community that had to do that, as a matter of fact. Mm. So it's been uh, mm -hmm. extreme, and our corner's done a heck of a job with what he's doing. So. Well, you know, Commissioner, I was, I've been looking at uh, just a segue on the corner and, and what you're talking about, the expenses. <laughs> I was looking over the finances for the crime lab, and, and clearly we, we have not been successful with, with the voters, with them to understand the crime lab issues. We're, we're, we're up in some areas four or five times the amount of testing we're doing. Um, Excuse me real quick. Sturt County Corner using mobile cooling units to store bodies County. because it's more grand out of space, which mm -hmm. is Canton, Ohio. Down Canton. The, the, while we have, while we, while I've been able to stabilize mm -hmm. the burn, over at the crime lab, that we've been running negative. We're not running negative. I think we ended 16 not in in the in the red, but we can't add the staff we need to meet the demands of all the testing that's coming through the front door, uh, and it's not going to end anytime soon. So. I just wanted to add, add to your comments, uh, Commissioner Kalo, that um, you know once again that this is basically filling a hole. Not that anybody's flush with cash. Uh, sometimes there's that perception out there, and was uh, very disturbed by uh, some postings that were being put online, uh, primarily I think by folks who uh, have wishes of reforming county government, uh, claiming that uh, uh, because of the 10 million in property taxes that we collected, now we had this uh, huge surplus, um, which once again we get a uh, was a dollar 62 for every hundred dollars uh, collected. And uh, so, which once again came down to about $162,000 on that $10 million we collected. So I just want to make sure people understand that uh, there are folks out there who uh, I think now are starting to specialize in alternative facts. Um, but uh, this is, uh, I guess, I, I don't want this to be seen as some kind of spending spree because it's not. These are things that have been put off for a long, long time. Uh, if folks only knew how bad things were at the jail, um, we have to end up, you know, subsidizing uh, additional funds for the jail to keep things operational over there. But, you know, government for a long time has run into uh, this pattern of just basically uh, um, trying to get through another day. And, uh, but, you know, you end up reaching the day where the, the roof on the house or the gutters need to be fixed or the windows need to be replaced. And, um, you can only stretch it so far, so um, just want to make everybody aware that uh, we are we are not flush with cash. Um, we're catching up on a lot of things that needed to be caught up on a long, long time ago. And uh, as it relates to property taxes, uh, you know, everybody worked hard to collect those funds. Uh, most of them go to the schools as it should, as it should. Um, but uh, we receive a very small portion of that, so we're not. Uh, uh, running some big uh, big surplus as a result of the delinquent property tax collections. That's just a, 
about as fake as you can get when it comes to so-called uh, fake news. <laughs> And it's coming from people who should know better because they were commissioners and they should realize where the money comes from when it's levy activity. So, mm -hmm. well, what, what was that when the when the fiction is more exciting than the facts? Print the fiction, right? Uh, you know, putting um, <clears throat> putting proper numbers there doesn't inflame people. And it doesn't. Uh, so it, I, I too saw the, the numbers that were put out there, and they, they were misleading at best. Um, and I do believe that some folks know that, and, and they are attempting to mislead. Um, the the uh, we had complaints about our aggressiveness with getting these property taxes. Well, let me also add something that hasn't been discussed about those property taxes. This community went to a massive, massive reception that was probably worse than what we've seen on the national level, and everybody knows how bad that was. Mm -hmm. And our community suffered even more because of the reliance upon the industries that were affected. Mm -hmm. Going out there and squeezing people out of their home like it's the Great Depression wasn't really in the best interest of our community. While we, while we did pursue those those areas where we believe collection was was sufficient, we tried to get people on payment plans and, and get them straightened out, to 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 beat people when they're down without trying to help them along. I don't That's think is the right. answer either. So now things are all better in the community. They're better in lots of places in our community, and we're, we're, we're working real hard to, to make sure that they, people are either on the payment, continue to make their payments, or there's other people now that are, well, we can collect from that we're doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for a lot of people, and a lot of fine people, not just bad people, because people think they're all bad, a lot of people that would, they would be surprised that they may live next door to in good neighborhoods, mm -hmm. not just bad neighborhoods, were behind on their property taxes. So it, 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 it was much like the heroin epidemic. It, it doesn't just happen in the, in, in the seedy bad areas that you, you think, well, well, it couldn't happen over here. So uh, I'm glad that the, uh, we're making such progress and we're going to continue to make that progress on those collections. And it's just unfortunate the good, hard, solid work that the prosecutor's office, the treasurer, the land bank, working to, to get these dollars back into the community, they turn it around and turn it into a negative. That's, you know, the unfortunate part. <clears throat> did we make a motion? Did I make a Any motion? further discussion? Yeah. Oh. Okay, Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Number 12, oppose SB 72 prevailing wage. As introduced, this would allow political jurisdictions and universities to decide whether to pay workers less than the state required prevailing wage. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, a little bit, please. Uh, as I brought this up on about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, at the last Commissioners Association meeting, statewide board, uh, this was brought to the board looking for endorsement. I believe Senator Huffman introduced the legislation. Uh, and again, basically, it was giving counties, cities, and townships the ability to, if you want to do prevailing wage, you have to opt in. If not, there's no prevailing wage in regards to funds spent on projects. Uh, there was a big argument there. Uh, the Commissioners Association alone in the, and previously the Ohio Municipal League and Township Association already endorsed this process. Uh, we had a long drawn out uh, discussion at the Commissioner's Board meeting about supporting or not supporting. Eventually it was supported by the CCAO two to one. Uh, we had 20, there were 23 yes votes and then on our side there were 11 of us who voted against it. Uh, explaining that when you have prevailing wage, you put everybody on the same level playing field when it comes to bidding work. It doesn't have to be union. A lot of time it is. But, you know, everybody starts the same with a livable wage. Uh, and when you eliminate these guidelines, you leave it open for anyone. And the argument from one side of the board was, you ask for more tools in your local government, he's giving you a tool here. Yeah. And from the other point, as I had said many years ago with SB5, it's the only tool he gave me was a screwdriver to screw my exactly. employees. So uh, that conversation didn't go well with the mm -hmm. governor at the time. But uh, it was long drawn out fight, uh, again, opposed pulling the prevailing wage. As a former union contractor who employed a lot of union prevailing wage workers who bid a lot of work, whether government or private sector, uh, you're getting a certain requirement of a quality of worker. Uh, the training's involved, workers' comp's taken care of, health insurance is taken care of, and I think overall you get a better work product at the end of the day. So, uh, in discussions here, the board back and forth in supporting 
uh, opposing Senate Bill 72. It's just a back side, you know, to start back on the SB5, right. you know, but taking little chunks at a time. So, mm -hmm. again, uh, appreciate the board and Commissioner Lundy, Commissioner Krakos, you know, actually supporting the prevailing wage. I would hate to see that it becomes an opt-in if you want it. Mm -hmm. So that's about all my comments on this. Now the, um, I mean, the purpose of Ohio's prevailing wage law is actually to ensure that taxpayers receive the best quality work product, uh, you know, for the lowest possible price. And, um, you know, there's been claims about it saving millions of dollars on some of these projects that I think the labor costs, uh, I understand, somewhere around 25% on, on most of these projects. Um, sometimes you'll see maybe a $3 difference per square foot on some pricing. But the bottom line is you, you want a skilled worker working on uh, your project and uh, you know we have a responsibility to make sure the project is is done well and done right the first time and um, to make sure it's a quality uh, quality work product when it's all finished and uh, you know the dumbing dumbing down of wages I mean if you pay you pay peanuts you know what you get so um, but there's been plenty of studies that have been done I remember this coming up in committee in Columbus on many occasions discussion about this and uh, there have been numerous studies done on the impact of repealing, uh, repealing rather prevailing wage and uh, you know some of those uh, consequences include uh, lower wages for construction workers, reduce health and pension benefits for construction workers, reduce sales tax revenue, reduce corporate income taxes, uh, it weakens the system of construction's apprenticeship training programs, uh, increases occupational injuries and associated costs that go with that. Um, so, and also I, something that people don't talk about, it increases construction work done by out-of-state contractors in your state. And I think the whole idea is to try to keep it as local as possible. So, um, Senator Huffman, I've served with him and a real, real sharp guy, real bright guy, but uh, sometimes mischievous about things. And uh, Senate Bill 72 is uh, uh, something I wasn't surprised when I saw him associated with it, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, I certainly oppose trying to uh, uh, dumb down the wages and, and jeopardize the quality of work uh, when the taxpayers are paying for it. Okay. Any further discussion on that? <clears throat> Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Uh, number 13 under community development, award various contracts for homeowners to receive grant assistance from the CHIP FY16 private rehabilitation activities for home rehabilitation assistance, which includes a contingency for any unforeseen change orders and these being the most responsive, complying with specifications. Number one, Solid Ground Construction Incorporated in Westlake in the amount of $35,541 for Linda Mullins at 4048 Ivanhoe Avenue in Sheffield Lake for home rehabilitation work. Number two is Solid Ground Construction Incorporated in Westlake in the amount of $37,635 for Kathleen Brunner at 247 Thelma in Sheffield Lake for home rehabilitation work. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kukowski. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> it distresses me no end <laughs> that workers leave in Lorraine County that doesn't need to leave Lorraine County. Westlake certainly doesn't need all the money. We do, and I want to make this known because people just see this little snapshot. We do send out a tremendous amount of offers to, to bid mm -hmm. uh, to our <coughs> local folks, and we just don't receive the participation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because the jobs are too small, they're too busy, I don't know. Uh, we've, we've actually ramped our efforts upstairs to make sure that we're in contact, the word's out there. Uh, sometimes we do have a lot of folks even come out that, that uh, view the, the job, because one of the requirements is to go out and, and, and you just can't blind bid this work. Right. 
and we don't we don't we don't get any bids. doing everything possible to keep this work at home. It, it just it's just very distressing when it, even just Westlake, which is right across the border, is just too far for me. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue our efforts, but we have no choice. We don't get the quotes, and we get some responsive quotes, and and we have to go with them. So I just want you to know that we're that we're still working at it. Well, I know you know I've been to the meetings that community development has ha held and had with. Uh, uh, folks who could do this work. I know we've reached out to the BIA uh, to work with them. And, um, but yes, you know, it, it continues to be very, very frustrating. And, uh, um, you know, as I've said before, if, if you're running a business and you're concerned you're gonna have to do too much paperwork, please come in, we'll walk you through it. Um, and uh, so you can get back to, to doing the job and, and hopefully bidding on some of this stuff. But it is very frustrating for the money to go uh, out of county, out of county, uh, you know, even if it's neighboring Westlake, um, I'm sure there's plenty of contractors here who could uh, do the work. So once again, we invite you to contact community development or <laughs> contact us here at the board, and and uh, we'll walk you through the process and make it as painless as possible. I don't think it's very painful to begin with. Any further discussion? Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Number 14, under the engineer, approve and enter into an emergency contract with U.S. Bridge Cambridge, Cambridge for a cost not to exceed $79,065 for immediate repairs to <coughs> Whitehead Road, excuse me, <coughs> Whitehead Road Bridge, number 0813 in Carlisle Township, due to severely deteriorated bridge beams. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Number 15, advertise notice to contracts for Jones Road Bridge, number 0223 and 0275 culvert replacement project in Wellington Township. Notice is to be in the Chronicle on March 17 and 24th open at 2 p.m. on April 11. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Okay, Mr. Cordes? I don't have any further comments this morning. Thank you. <laughs> wow, no, no good cool. stories to tell. <laughs> no, no, no good stories to tell. I think, I think we had enough. Uh, I, I, you know, I am. Nope. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ms. Kikowski. Okay. Um, Thursday was a pretty busy day. Uh, first thing in the, in the morning, I had a conference call regarding our stepping up initiative. Um, it's uh, we're talking about a two-day workshop that's coming up at how our process works in Lorain County and how we can better address mental illness and co-occurring addiction issues um, when people are in crisis and trying to defer them from going uh, to jail. Uh, Thursday evening we had our annual advisory council meeting for the Lorain County Health Department and I have given each of my commissioners a uh, copy of their uh, annual report. Um, it was less than about an hour. As I was leaving, Mr. Cordes, you might find this interesting. I saw they were working over at the 911 building on the tower. It was dark, at like probably 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night, and uh, they were over there working on our tower. So hopefully it's, I you saw know, the I, light flashing, so it must be operational. I, well, we have to put the warning up there, whether it's operational or not. We don't want anybody running, airplanes True. running in. True. True. Uh, the, 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 uh, so, the tower's up. I will tell you, if you drive by there, I'll warn you now, it's an optical illusion. It's not leaning. It's not the leaning tower of Lorraine. <laughs> uh, but with the, the way the building is and the trees, and it, it, it will give the illusion that it possibly is, is leaning. I, I went out there last night, and I was thinking, man, I know people are going to say this, this mm -hmm. thing is leaning. So, uh, Did you get your level out? Well, well, you know, they put the base in it. It's been shot. and So it's just one of those illusions when, when you look at the different angles. It could look like the towers actually leaned over a little bit. But, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, <laughs> please, let's not get those scathing emails that uh, we built a bent tower and <laughs> the whole nine yards. But, yes, work is ongoing. We're, we're progressing nicely. It's, uh, we, we have quite a few things to do over there, um, but this is just the first 
part of, of many things to come. And we're out to bid, I believe, for the exterior work yeah. uh, on the building. So I'm trying to get all of the exterior work done. We're still working on equipment. Uh, that's dragging. Consoles are dragging. A lot of the inside stuff that we, we need to do for the equipment is, is taking longer than I had anticipated. But I want to get the building wrapped up, secure, safe, uh, and get all of that work in the parking lots and all that done. Uh, inside we can we can progress as we need to but I want to make sure the building is itself done by summertime so we can do installation hopefully in the fall good so at the health department meeting that was the presentation of the 2018 budget and the 2016 annual report so then Saturday uh, I went to rally at the rescue at uh, Midway Mall they had a, a good turnout our dog kennel was there we had some volunteers from the kennel and uh, they brought to my attention uh, reminding me that um, it, we're going on three years that we have not had to put a dog down due to space issues at the kennel. So we have a, a really good group of volunteers and rescue groups and our staff working together. And when we start to get full, the email blasts go out and the radio stations. You know, we just have a good way of making sure that we, we're not having to put dogs down. So I'm really proud of all that's happening over there. Uh, Monday I went out to Columbia Township they had a meeting regarding gunshots and fire uh, gunfire and bullets penetrating people's houses um, the only question that I brought back with me and I actually asked Sandy to check with our 911 department is what our policy is when somebody calls 911 um, and what they're told uh, some people said that our dispatchers were saying well you're allowed to shoot in the townships but I didn't think it was up to them to make that call that it should go to the uh, sheriff's department to I, let uh, them determine well since I'm responsible to you for the operations there let me respond to that okay uh, our dispatchers are, are pretty fine folks they have all the policies procedures in front of them mm -hmm. I wish I could tell you that occasionally there's not a straight comment or a or off charted remark made during a conversation we we try to keep it down mm -hmm. to a minimum uh it may or may not have been said which i can conclusively say no commissioner goes get didn't say that mm -hmm. but what i really do need to be able to verify that is i would need you know more specifics so i can narrow the window uh, i do you know I, what the policy is though when somebody calls for gunfire when somebody calls for gunfire we dispatch okay. a resource well, we, that's what we I don't thought. decide okay. you know that that gets given over to the officer in charge at the sheriff's department mm -hmm. to make a, a decision on what course of action needs to be taken. Mm -hmm. uh, our dispatchers, again, they're fine people, <coughs> but, but they, they, they are dispatchers. Uh, I've been over this. I've met with the, uh, the sheriff's people. and I met with the, the, um, the person over the, the uh, officers in charge for policies and procedures. But we do have an occasional stray call. So anytime that happens and you get if you're getting please let me know immediately so I can go back to the tapes. We tape right. everything, we have it all there. I'm not looking to beat somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to use it as a training yep. and an improvement piece because we cannot screen every calls. Every call, excuse me. As you know, uh, less than a year ago I implemented a quite a quite a big quality assurance program down there on the calls. And, and monitoring the video and sampling a, a, a large a large amount of the calls. And the performance has improved significantly. We now rate each shift. We rate each dispatch based upon a certain sampling of their calls, and we grade them. And things have really remarkably improved exponentially. Commissioner Lundy, you were in yeah. some front end stuff we did with the yeah. city of Elyria right. and the hospitals on dispatch times. Uh, I think we learned a, a few things there that I, I was very pleased with. Uh, so overall, I believe our performance is stellar, but I still need to catch those little stray ones. As much as possible so I'll, I'll check on it but it's going to be hard to I just want to make sure that what our policy was that's all mm -hmm. okay. our, yeah. our policy is that the officer in charge okay mm -hmm. good and I just wanted to echo uh, Commissioner that um, having attended uh, some of the, the quality meetings that are held with the hospital and with City of Elyria that uh, the feedback has been very positive and uh, uh, I know it's hard to say in government, but believe it or not, lots of words of praise uh, about the uh, substantial progress that we've made in improvement, and uh, it's always nice to hear. So Jim's done a good job over there making sure that when people have concerns, we always ask them, let us know when it happened, what the time was, the day was, so that we can isolate the tape, listen to it, take a look, um, 
and um, you know walk through what took place and then discuss it more in those meetings but uh, the group has been uh, very pleased with uh, what we've been doing in our, our quality control improvements that would be the end of my report yeah it's a busy week all over uh, Friday NOACA had their uh, quarterly board meeting uh, we facility planning area boundary was changed uh, in regards to the pheasant run subdivision which we'll be having our public hearings coming up but uh, the service goes to LaGrange Village I'd like to thank everyone involved Commissioner you know as soon as we got the notice on that I think I cc'd you you uh, all three on that email in fact Matt I confused you a little bit uh, I was sending it to another Matt and mm. okay. <laughs> I, 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 I seldom tell a commissioner what to do I would like to, <laughs> <laughs> to clarify that but uh, you did come back and say okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, but we're applying for those low interest loans uh, to EPA and uh, we're looking at US rural trying to get some some loans for those folks that are going to be less than 2% on mm -hmm. and we'll also we'll look at the options of uh, possibly going out 30 years I, I don't like that the carrying costs are significant mm -hmm. But I, I want to bring enough to the meeting to demonstrate to those folks we have grave concerns for all the costs that they're going to bear. But that's not your fault. And we'll go over that with the residents right. at that point. But I am seeking on behalf of you every possible lower cost solution available uh, that, that we can help these folks with. But I had to have that change in the facility. I couldn't do anything without that change. Right. So we've got that. I'd like again, thank NOACA, Grace Gallucci, the director, and their staff. Uh, we're coordinating with us so that can move forward on the pheasant run project so they can continue to flush toilets uh, <clears throat> I serve on the emergency food and shelter board for the United Way of Lorain County we met and approved our dollars going forward for phase 34 to handle those people who have utilities issues food issues and shelter issues with the land bank I mean the food bank uh, second harvest is a great partner with us um, also, in regards to NOAC, I'd forgotten we did uh, lay out our 2017 federal and state legislative agenda, uh, working cooperatively again with ODOT and the feds on, you know, strengthening some of our needs here, whether it's asset management using multimodal, including that in funding, as we all know. We're part of a special transit grant from our TLCI to look at how we're going to move forward, but it's a nice little piece if you have nothing else to read. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I uh, met with, uh, I think, Max and Ari from Ohio Environmental Council speaking about issues going forward, whether it has to do with the water quality and or alternative energy, not facts. And we uh, talked about the issues with Lead Co. and moving forward with that with the offshore wind program. Also, I said I attended Congressman Captor's town hall Monday evening at Lorraine High. Nice turnout, probably 100 people there. And uh, Congresswoman has always did a nice job informing what's going on in D.C. Um, also, I want to thank you out to uh, Dick Connick, Cliff German, Tony Gallo, Tim Alcorn for putting together uh, the American Polish meeting with the Council General last evening at German's Villa. Uh, the Council General did a great job of explaining how they want to expand in Ohio both ways trade. A Polish investment here because it's almost like being in Poland they mirror each other the whole north coast of Ohio because of the large you know immigrant Polish population we have uh, again a very nice job on that Tuesday my meeting was canceled because of the blizzard of 2017 I wasn't able to attend a meeting in Columbus they canceled is that the Trump was it yeah no, yeah the materialize and underdelivered. <laughs> excuse me sorry for that myself. but it was a meeting in regards uh, with the DRC Department of Corrections to explain what they're going to do for us at a county level with county commissioners in regards to not taking felony fives to state prisons are they, anymore. Are they still seriously consistent? I had a meeting. It was canceled, but that was our discussion points on Tuesday. I'll be in Columbus Friday. I think I'm in Columbus Friday. So I'm sure some of that discussion will come up on what's talked beforehand and we'll reschedule a meeting with the DRC. So. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of a lot of felonies are pleaded down the fives, mm -hmm. which, you know, and, and a couple things will happen with that not only will we have to deal with the felony fives ourselves mm -hmm. but i think there's going to be more of a reluctance to try to give people an opportunity at a lesser charge to try to correct themselves because of the incarceration issues mm -hmm. uh, i i don't believe they're looking at the whipsaw effect of this whatsoever and, and the long-term ramifications well i think it just carries forward what uh, the current administration was trying to do with eliminating the population within the uh state prison centers so we'll see where it goes again 
again, concerns with indigent defense funding. It looks like we're going to be in the low 40s this year and then probably 40% for the next biennial because of less funding coming into uh, the funding streams that support it. So we'll be discussing that with the state legislature. Actually, I was told uh, Representative Manning is in charge of that uh, committee now uh, since uh, Representative Boos is now a commissioner in Huron County. He was term limited out who helped us get it to 50% all those years. So hopefully we can find a way to re-revenue it. Re-revenue. Is, re -revenue. That those, is that one of those new words? It's a new word. We're going to re-revenue re it. Re-revenue. Yes. So, and everyone have a safe St. Paddy's Day, please. Uh, as you know, uh, drinking and driving, please be careful. Call a friend. <laughs> Uber. Drinking and driving, please be careful. How about don't drink and drive? <laughs> I am not one to slow down the local economy. <laughs> End of my report. Okay. Um, also enjoyed a meeting this week with the Ohio Environmental Council. I had a chance to work closely with them. Uh, when I was in uh, uh, Columbus, believe me, they do very good work. I think uh, certainly their work is going to be even more important and significant with um, some of the policies of um, current administrations, uh, both in the state and in Washington. I uh, was unable to attend the Lorraine City Schools meeting uh, that was held at El Centro and uh, very important for the community to have a greater understanding of uh, the state's uh, movement uh, to take over control of the uh, Lorraine City Schools. As I said, I find that very uh, troublesome. I think that uh, everybody's been working very hard, the administration and the teachers, uh, to improve the quality of uh, education and in Lorraine and to meet the standards the tough part is if you can imagine uh, being a high jumper and they keep raising the bar on you and get it up so high where probably even Superman can fly over it uh, it becomes a little frustrating but uh, everybody's working very hard to uh, provide a quality education for the students of the Lorraine City Schools and I just think it's really critical as the mayor has said that we have uh, Preferably, Superintendent Graham continue to be at the helm so there's local leadership who understands just what's going on in the community. Um, on Friday, I had a chance to attend the Urban League uh, Diversity and Inclusion Conference that was held at the Rain County Community College. Uh, Dr. Vivian Jackson came in from Georgetown University and, and um, really made it a, a working couple hours uh, pushing organizations and pushing everybody at their tables to really drill down on all the various uh, individual definitions that we have as it relates to uh, diversity. And when you actually stop and think about it, uh, she actually had us put it down on paper how we identify ourselves based upon uh, race and uh, age and gender and socioeconomic status, our education, our religion, and you know, it just goes on and on and on, uh, which goes to show how, how you can put probably just a uh, uh, two people in the room there's going to be extreme diversity uh, between those two people but um, thought it was very well done and uh, very much enjoyed and congratulations to the Urban League on a successful event there later in the day went made my way over to the uh, to the riverfront for the announcement of the rocking on the river schedule and uh, once again always enjoy meeting Bob early that guy's just a bundle of energy um, just uh, and a funny guy too so he was commenting about uh, bringing in bringing in a, a Neil Diamond type concert this year and he he was talking about all his reservations and he said so if anything goes wrong blame me but I think he'll probably be surprised I think he'll probably get a, a pretty strong turnout for I that got my but season passes in the mail yesterday oh, great yes. great yeah I mean you can't beat it they were keeping the shows at five dollars a piece and uh, uh, still getting about what five or six thousand people come down for the event it's just a great opportunity to showcase Lorraine County to showcase Lorraine uh, to showcase our lakefront and thank you to NOPEC I guess which has become a, a major sponsor this year of the uh, rocket on the river um, also had the opportunity to attend the Benai Israel uh, synagogue event that was held in Lorraine on Saturday Unfortunately, following some of the vandalism that took place over there uh, off of uh, Meister Road, um, very well attended. I was uh, pleased to see so many people there from the greater Cleveland area. These one family came in from Ashtabula, a lot of folks there from Beechwood and Shaker and Cleveland Heights, and a lot of folks made the uh, uh, the drive in to show their support. And you know, as we said at that event, uh, you know, we reject hate. Um, very concerned and disturbed. Um, that someone would do something like this and 
um, as folks there at the event said, uh, uh, we always believe that uh, love conquers hate. So uh, hopefully uh, this was just an isolated incident. We won't see this again. Okay. Uh, board correspondence. I move the reading be waived. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Mr. Lundy? Aye. Uh, any public comment today? Anybody wishing to address the board this morning? Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. Good morning. We know who you are, but you still need to uh, uh, state your name and address for the record. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. My name is uh, Gerald W. Phillips. My address is uh, 461 Windward Way, Avon Lake, Ohio. 44012. I want to talk about the recent uh, sales tax increase. On behalf of the residents, citizens, taxpayers, and electors of Lorain County, and as a representative of the Ohio citizens for honesty, integrity, and openness in government, I do hereby make a formal demand upon the commissioners to place on the ballot at the next general election, November 7th, 2017, the question of the repeal of the recently enacted sales tax increase passed on December 14, 2016. The process and procedures followed and used to pass the sales tax increase was both illegal, unlawful, and violated basic principles of honesty, integrity, and openness in government. Commissioner Matt Lundy voted against this tax increase because of his commitment to his campaign pledge, although he thought there was a financial need. Commissioner Lori Kurkowski flip-flopped on this issue. At stake here is the public confidence in the process. Therefore, I formally request that you honor the above demand. If you honor such a demand, I will assist you in educating the public concerning the merits of the tax increase, the financial need for any tax increase, cost-cutting alternatives, and informing the public. You must do the right thing. If you fail to honor this request, you will force me on behalf of the residents, citizens, taxpayers, and electors of Lorain County, and as a representative of Ohio Citizens for Honesty, Integrity, and Openness in Government Limited to pursue other alternatives to protect the citizens, residents, taxpayers, and electors' right to vote, including any and all legal challenges and means to protect the right to vote. Do the right thing. Thank you. Jerry, the only comment I have there is when you say illegal. There was nothing yeah. illegal about what we did. As someone who sat up here a long time, you can come back to the microphone. You're an attorney. Well, you know well, how to respond. Well, I didn't want you to made some comments it. there, Jerry, well, that said illegal. There was nothing illegal. It was a vote. Well, you didn't follow Robert's rules of order. Okay. You didn't go through the motion for reconsideration, and you didn't hold the public hear hearings. So honor the request, and we won't go, we won't go there that well, way. Our job is to okay? do responsibility for I understand. government. But I'm willing to help you, but do the right thing. Okay? Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address the board? <laughs> Seeing none, I move that we go into executive session as outlined by the county administrator. Second. Ms. Kakowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Mr. Lundy. Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorainecounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.